But yeah, final level time. Hey, you finally made it, Spyro. Hunter was a little worried about you when you went off to fight the sorceress, but I always knew you'd beat her. This place is where the sorceress kept all her treasure. But after she was defeated, a bunch of thieves came and stole it. If you can catch the thieves, you're more than welcome to keep the treasure. Okay, so uh, this is more like, think more like uh, Nasty's loot than uh, Dragon Shores because um, the the idea of this is basically just get get the remaining gems really and get a bunch from the thieves. Um, Nasty's loot was so much fun. Yeah, it's a it's similar I idea here uh, as Dossie's loot. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the, um, the, uh... Catharsis. <laughs> right, I, 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 I guess. It, do it doesn't have the same, it doesn't uh, ever have, like a, like, a room the equivalent to all the fireworks and all the, all the uh, purple gems. Um, but... I mean, you get you get a bunch of gems from each of the thieves, like so. So that that does feel good, and you, but you also don't have the uh, the cool uh, gimmick of Nazi's loot where you could you uh, flew higher and higher the more doors you opened and stuff. Um, but there's um, a couple mini games here. <laughs> <laughs> oh hi! I'll get you. Uh, there are a couple mini games here. One of them isn't too bad, but there's one in particular that's arguably the hardest in the game if you aren't counting Bentley and Bentley boxing. And like, it's not hard due to necessarily bad design or anything. It's just like you, you really can't afford to mess up at all. And uh... was there supposed to be original music in this stage? Yeah, this... It, I don't think it's supposed to... I don't think it's meant to sound like this. Woo! Yeah. Love seeing all these purple gems. Yeah. So I would say, um... Nothing better than robbing than looting your enemies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I don't know if I'd call this my favorite, but it's, it's definitely, um, not Nasty's loot and uh, Super Bonus World, uh, which is this one, is, are both like really fun final levels. Um, this one's like easily the most difficult, um, but I don't know. Uh, not Nasty. Nasty's Lou I like for just being a, a cathartic, like just final romp kind of thing. Whereas this has like a bit more meat to it, but at the same time, Hi, Spyro. Did you see it the could be argued that it's a really bit too hard. Some to uh, the sorceress. mainly for that one funny. specific thing I was she talking about. To play it cool, but she was scared but you came back safe. Yeah, I, w I would I probably rank this and Nasi's loot around the Why same level. And Dragon Shores is more of a... Great, kind of just a, more of a just chill post-game post, post -game thing, really. There's nothing wrong with that, but I prefer the other two. Would you? Where, where, where would you like rank all the uh, final stages? Um, they're all fun in their own special ways. Yeah. It's having made almost free flight in Nasty's loop, so yeah, so special edge. Dragon Shores is just fun because Spiral finally got to go have his vacation. Yeah, I like that. This is fun, aside from maybe maybe some of the mega games are a little too difficult, but this is all right. I think it yeah. would have been better if they had the other characters show up. Yeah, that would have been nice, like have them show up as a final hurrah. But it's literally just Spyro, which is a little this bit game disappointing. Was rushed. 
Yeah. This game was so rushed. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if they planned something for them, but... Like, just have them go out on a final hurrah, but... Nah. I mean, I, I appreciate it for not dragging on because of that, but still. They don't even have to be... I didn't even need playable missions from them, I just wanted to see them again. Yeah. Yeah, just have them here, at least. Yeah, I like uh, Dragon Shores in the sense that you actually uh, get to play, um, like, you, you actually get to play it, like, because, um, it's one of those things where, like, you expect it to, expect Spyro to just go in the portal, the game ends, and then you just go back to Avalor, and you can't, you don't actually play Dragon Shores. It'd be like the postcard in Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice that you actually get to see it and play it, so, yeah, I can... I'll give, give the game that. And it's like... Uh, I, I don't want to say hyped up necessarily, but like... It, it's um, mentioned as early as the start of the game, so... It would be disappointing if they didn't show it. He just goes in the portal and fades the black. Yeah. Directed by Ridley Scott. If you want to play the uh, Dragon Shores uh, DLC, you have to pay... Uh, pay EA like five five dollars or pounds. <laughs> oh man, I I uh, I apparently uh, someone someone um, made like a joke. I, I don't know if it was a video or a tweet. Um, it was like I heard it. I heard about this from Til, uh, one of uh, Till Game Master's videos, but apparently someone joked about how. Uh, you you have to uh, now pay money bags real money uh, <laughs> to like get make him teach you the moves and give you like um, make you go through the levels and whatever else he does um, and um, someone took that literally and made a video saying like so we now have confirmation that uh, um, money bags. Uh, um, requires you to give, uh, give you, um, hit, uh, um, Champion. give you your money, or this like, you have to give it, you have to give him your money, <laughs> and it's just like, no, it wasn't being serious. I bet that you could outrace the line. My face actually got pissed out of a lot of business practices. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, really hard challenge, uh, by the way. So, ready to race? Right on! Just don't lose, or my tongue's gonna be a popsicle! Hopefully we can do this. Because no matter how many, how many times I do this, I always uh, struggle with this. Because it's not exactly the most friendly uh, racetrack to do tricks on. Um, yeah. No kidding. Case in point. Because you, you, you need to have boost almost all at all times, basically, because um, these guys are really, really relentless. And if you, like, aren't... Yeah, Whoa! Just, yeah. Check it out. Okay, it's just... Yeah, but like... The AI are like in like crazy good on this. You have to basically have a boost at all times if you want to get first. Uh, and yeah, again, doing tricks in on this track is easier said than done, considering how lit like narrow this is. And yeah, this is. I mean, this I guess it's reasonable to have like a really difficult challenge at the end of the game, but. They probably should have toned it down a little bit, because this is a bit too much. Looks fun to go through, though. Yeah. God dang it, and stuff like that can happen. Yeah. It's like... Ugh, dang. Check it out. Yeah, it's like the snow, the uh, snowboard, skateboard. Uh, this is this is like a snowboard with like 
rocket boosters. Uh, for and these sections are always like fun to play. Um, and this is like no exception. It's still fun to play. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it might take a bit to get actually get right. Check. Uh, did you manage to uh, finish um, Year of the Dragon and like play this? Yeah, I got everything. Uh, what you what you think about this? Took a while. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay. I'm gonna mostly just be in uh, focus mode here. So, okay, I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> Wait, you still have your missile? Oh, what the heck? The crap just knocked me off. Didn't know I could do that. Uh, we, we're probably going to be on this for uh, quite a while. But hopefully not too long, but um, yeah. This is uh, going to be a doozy. What? Okay, that, 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 that's... I don't know how that happened, because I was boosting through that. Uh, what haven't we discussed? I'm pretty sure we've talked about basically everything in this uh, trilogy, more or less. Everything that comes to mind, anyway. No, I was expect I was expecting to get uh, more height. Whoa. Okay. Ah. Uh. What the heck? Um, okay, yeah, the, yeah. This game kind of glitched a little bit there. Check. I don't know. to come for when you play Spyro Four. <laughs> you thought this was rushed and glitchy. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least with this game, like, for the most part, it's relatively harmless glitches. Slap the music issues. Yeah. Well, that's less so a glitch and uh, more so just just not having it on the disc in the first place. The fact that it, the fact that this game was rushed out and incomplete is a glitch. <laughs> yeah, may as well be. Man, if only <laughs> Enter the Dragonfly got like a, a greatest hits or something, and it ended up being like the proper game. That would be hilarious. I still think that in a better world, Enter a Dragon Fly would have just been developed on PlayStation 1. <laughs> I mean, it would still be lit weird to play it in 2002, but at least they would not lose the developers. No. At least the devs wouldn't have to be so hamstrung by new technology. Yeah. I mean, I'll give the game some credit. Like, it doesn't look too bad for the, uh, for the sixth generation. Like, it's very, um,. Like, well, well, when you can compare it to other games, it's pretty standard. Like, it's nothing too mind-blowing, but it doesn't look too bad. The animations aside, I do think Enter Dragonfly looks better in Rapid Portex in some ways. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. There's more color for stars. And really most good. of the return characters don't look off-model. Yeah, but Falling Mew looks decent. Um, was it that? That was my main issue with Rather Cortex's like just art design. Like it, everything was just too dark. It's just washed out. Yeah, washed out. Like there's not enough. enough it, it's not vibrant enough. Like uh, oh no. 
Like, comparing to Snow Levels and Crash 2 versus Ra- No way, I think you still had a chance. Oh, uh, well, it, we were like near the end and he was I don't know. Good. Yeah, you can you can put, compare like, uh, the uh, Snow Levels in Crash 2 and then, and, like, wherever the first level was in- Ar Arctic Antics. Yeah, you, yeah, you just compare them side by side and it's like, it's like night and day. Almost literally. Yeah. Like, Arctic Antics looked like it was seemingly like, kind of looks like it was taking place like an early morning. Yeah. Ah. It's a pretty level, just not, it's not bright. Yeah. Yeah, the game doesn't look bad by any means. It is surfaceable, but I don't know. Uh. They, they, okay, they, 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 they should have like placed that a bit higher, because that is way too easy to screw up with. Exactly. Player bait. <laughs> huh? Player bait. Yeah, boy. That's probably. In, I wouldn't be surprised if that was intended. Yeah. That crab did nothing, Harry. Well, these crabs have been, like, messing me up a few times, so they gotta die. That crab did nothing wrong. <laughs> Everyone is dead. Whoa! Okay. Impressive. Yeah, try not to get too greedy. Just do what you know is gonna work. I, I try I tried doing that without jumping that time to see if it would make it uh Oh jeez, Harry. <laughs> oh yeah, there are gems here as well by the way. Yeah. Oh what were we talking yeah, you're about? Yeah, probably dead. Uh, uh rapid cortex is aesthetics. Oh uh, yeah. Oh no. I it, it might have like, something I, to do with the lighting as well, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's an early PS2 game and it shows. Yeah, basically. Like, games in general seem a little more washed out in the sixth generation. Yeah. So the transition period. It's like, except for the Zelda games, that act, well, Wind Waker at least, that actually got brighter compared to the NC4 titles. Yeah, because like uh, Ocarina and Majora were like trying to go for a semi-realistic approach in terms of, well, as much as they could do at the time, I guess. Um, the Twilight Princess um, went a step further at that, whereas like Wind Waker was trying to go for a different style entirely. Yes! You schooled them like a bunch of frost Which I, I, I still think like Wind Waker is... Lead pants wearing cross eyed glacier trolls hmm. riding slabs of plywood with sandpaper on the bottom. It might actually be my favorite Zelda game visually, mate. Like, it's either that or Breath of the Wild. Woo! Yeah. That, that is a nice. Look at that texture. Yeah, it goes on for quite a while. That almost makes up for this mission. <laughs> So, I'm just gonna have to go through the area a few times to get the the gems. I like how they let you go backwards. Yeah. Oh, here we go. There's one. Just fail. Oh, come on. I, I don't like how they force you back into this. You can't just walk around. Something back there. Let's try going to the upper roots. Uh, so, um, were, were you like, would you say like your favorite Zelda games from a visual uh, standpoint? Uh, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, Grand Breath of the Wild, really, at least for 3D games. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that, yeah. Um, 
Uh, um, 2D, um, like to the past, I guess. Yeah, I don't have much to say about 2D because I've only played uh, like two. Uh, well, 2D as in actually using sprites, like. So. Yeah. Why would you put Zelda 2 in this? Like Hard just... to judge, like, 8 bit sprites. Yeah. I mean, Zelda 2 doesn't look too bad. I mean. Okay, yeah, we're done here. The worst of it is done. <laughs> yeah, but, um. What is it? Like, I'd have to. I'd probably. I'd be. For games that old, I'd probably be more likely to actually judge based on the. on the actual official art. Yeah. And Zelda 2 does have official art, and. Oh, it's actually pretty nice. I do quite like how they redid all the uh, the the uh, the world and stuff in the Ocarina Majora's Mask remakes, but I don't know if I I don't know if I put them on the same level as like Wind Waker and and uh, Breath. The N64 games remakes on 3DS now they finally look more like their art. Yeah. I know people have fondness for them, but they look a little grayed out in some areas on the original. The originals do. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's such, some novelty about the originals, like how they look, but yeah, it's pretty more, more so Oc uh, Ocarina than Majora, but it's pretty dated. So I still think uh, Majora's Mask uh, original looks pretty decent. Like, doesn't, doesn't, isn't it like, they barely managed to, like, make it run on the N64 or something? I wouldn't be surprised. But the game being shorter than <laughs> overall. Yeah. But there's like, in terms of like, just visuals, like, there's a lot more going on than Ocarina though. I'm wondering what would have happened if they actually had given Link a new model for that game. Uh, it's more, it's more like an up, it's like a in-between of like, child and adult Link, because it's like, it's not exactly the same as young, young Link looked in uh, Ocarina, but it's not too different either. It's like, it's like a little, it's like an update. It's quite a still, the young Link, not that far removed from Ocarina time. Yeah, it's like, it's like a minor update to his uh, young Link design. Uh, oh, we're missing a gem. Oh gosh. This is... bad. <laughs> Just fly around. We'll find it eventually. Oh, Actually, hi. oh, there it is. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Uh, but... I don't know, what were we saying? Like, uh, uh, Young Link and all that, uh... They did, they apparently... You, seems like you're saying that they made Link's model look a bit older in Majora's Mask, despite him not being that much... Not really being all that older than he was in Ocarina of Time. I, I think the game takes place like seven months after. Not, well, maybe not seven months exactly, but several months after Ocarina does. Um, I mean, I know there's like they added more belts and stuff to the design, but I don't know. It's just uh, it's not too different, and I think I think uh, in terms of the remakes, I'm pretty sure the designs for both games are the same. But it's for like the, the uh, originals. I think Majora's you Mask is a slightly final, different young I Link. You I could be wrong, but mm. it feels like it. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Just I'm not sure. I I played both at least a while back. I, I would have to so. play. I, I would have to play both of the originals uh, back to back again just to be sure. So I'm gonna commit some poopy <laughs> because I need full sparks. Um, but, yeah I'd, yeah, I'd have to play the originals again, but I'm pretty sure the remakes are both the same model. What the heck is that gas sound Yeah. But yeah, this is basically just the last Ripto phase, except... Without even, not even with any epic music. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's meant to, it's meant to be a different track than this. But, yeah, you just keep shooting her, and sometimes she'll face you and shoot a... Uh, Homing short, basically. 
Alright, anyway, I'll, I'll come out soon. I wouldn't mind it. I'd always rather scrap from all these battles and count with something else. Uh, the sorceress fights in particular, or...? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. They're not gonna do it, but... I mean, I wouldn't mind if they just made this part better, but... Yeah, the first fight, the first fight definitely. Because that is... Really unremarkable. I mean, I'll say this much. I, she's eating crackers. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> uh, but uh, I will say this much. I think this this is a little uh, a little bit harder than the, the the final Ripto phase, just for the fact that the UFO thing doesn't shoot quite as fast, and she has more health. But besides that, it's the same fight pretty much. And finally, the dragons are reunited with their family. And this is a 100% cutscene exclusively, so you get something, which is nice. Besi uh, besides, like, skill points. That's far as dad. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Just love. <laughs> Gotta love. How, like. <laughs> Like, <laughs> se semi-insomniac trolling, I guess. Like, you- 100% the game, you get a burping baby dragon. <laughs> I think I'm going to take that as another casualty of this game's development cycle. <laughs> I mean, I- I mean, the fact that you get a 100% um, ending at all is nice, though. Spyro 1's was better, though. Ye yeah, I, I guess. I, I, it's kind I'm, of funny how it's like uh, everyone gets crystallized again, and it's never brought up in the sequels at all. So it just it just kind of happened, I guess. So like, what even was that about? Did Nasty come back? I mean, I don't think it was ever implied that he was dead. He was just kind of yeah. defeated, and oh man, I'd be more bothered about that 117% ending actually if. If the other, the main ending wasn't good enough, and it was. Hmm. Well, in this game's case, uh... Yeah, in this game's case. Yeah, because the, 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 um... The ending, the actual ending was, uh, A nice way to, uh, just... Uh, br uh, talk, talk to some of the side characters again. And... Wrap up that... <laughs> that little romance subplot, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but... <sighs> uh... Final thoughts... Uh... Watching you play through this again, it's... It still holds up. Mm. And, and now that I've seen Spiral 2 and 3 back to back, at least... I mean, played by you vicariously, but... <laughs> back to back, I do think your dragon probably holds up better in some ways. A good deal of ways, actually. Okay. I guess you can just like do, uh, since since you started, you may, may as well just do uh, do your thoughts um, overall. Great game, some garbage missions, and <laughs> the character, the additional characters aren't always implemented well. But for something that was rushed out for a celebration, it could have been worse. Oh yeah. I mean, Insomniac should not be complaining, should not have complained as much as they did about Enter the Dragonfly when they did basically the same thing. Yeah. Not, not entirely, not exactly comparable, but it's in the, it's in the ballpark. You could tell that Enter the Dragonfly was trying to be the next year of the dragon. Like, just way, the way it's designed, really. And it just doesn't work. Well, but, man, I blame Universal for that, not the developers. Yeah, it, it we'll... we'll Touch more on that later. It's quite a long topic of discussion. Goodness, gorgeous Universal screwed the drop the ball. It's crashing spiral so much. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, um, uh, we have um, uh, a bright future for them now. My goodness, gorgeous! I don't think I've seen like every PS One era franchise got mismanaged at the ground in the two thousands. Yeah. Mm. But you got anything else to say? Music's great. 
for when, when they actually put it on. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice little cap off of the trilogy. Yeah. It was nice. It, in some respects, it does feel kind of a return to Spyro One's style, so to speak. Mm. Um, I like the story a lot. It was interesting getting lore from the series. Yeah. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Okay. Final thoughts, Harry. Uh, yeah, I. I love this game for the most part, uh, minus out a few uh, missions here and there. Uh, mainly, mainly the Bentley boxing and um, uh, yeah, the main one. The main ones are just basically that and uh, Sheila's mission with um, in the uh, the haiku level. I forget the name of it, like Spooky Swamp or whatever. Um, yeah, but besides that, I do like the uh, the side characters. Like I enjoy playing as, as them. Definitely no, definitely no uh, Spyro. Just, like not as fun as uh, as uh, playing a Spyro. But I think for what they are, they're uh, a nice fun. Uh, they're a nice fun time and gives the game some variety. Um, because um, I feel like with, with Spyro two. Um, you, all, all the missions are in that game are, you play as Spyro, and I feel, I feel that like Spyro as a character, um, like, isn't as, like, versatile, isn't versatile, versatile enough to, um, really, to really have, like, much variety, just in terms of uh, how he plays, um, because I, I feel like I feel like um, Spyro Spyro Two is a bit exhaust. It can be a bit exhausting because of that. Um, because it is just Spyro, um, and with, with the basically with his limited move set compared to someone like so, uh, a char characters like Banjo Kazooie or whatever, um, it gets. It gets kind of exhausting, whereas in this game you're constantly switching up the characters and they all play pretty differently, and the game's constantly trying different things, and um, whether you think they, the game does those things well is up to you, but I think it does most of them pretty well, and I, I enjoy the variety for just having more things to do and keep, and it keeps the action from the game from just getting stale. Um, and it helps that the characters are likable as well, um, and it, it, it gives the game just a nice, a nice set of, a, a nice new set of characters, um, and, um, I don't know, it basically covered all the rest we need, I think, I think this game has the best overall level design, it's a nice blend of Spyro 2's more, um, Spyro 2's idea of like having the worlds be more lifted and having more just having more of a visual identity um, and adding like the extra challenges and stuff like that as well as just having the the uh, tight platforming of the first game not as strict um, platforming necessarily but um, it's definitely more of a step in that direction than Spyro 2 was um, and I think the I think the home worlds have I, I think the game has generally better pacing than Spyro 2 as well because there's not I don't think there's too many levels in each of the home worlds um, and they go by all about the same time each um, so I think the game has generally decent pacing with that and the fact that you get to beat up money bags is a highlight. Um, and uh, again, like just touching the story and all that, uh, minus having no um, Sparrow and the Sorceress cutscenes, um, I do really like it. Um, like this, like you said, it's nice having some lore here and um, just learning about how there's forgotten worlds and all that. I think Bianca is a really good character. She has like the best. Are like character development arc or character arc in the in the trilogy. I think 
Um, and I don't know what else I, can I really say. Again, I, I like I like the character. I, I like the uh, side characters. Um, they're amusing for what they are. Um, I'm not sure if I like them more than the Spyro, the cast introduced in Spyro 2 because Hunter's still like definitely um, one of my favorites, just in general. He, uh, he became, he grew into his, uh, he became, he was already good in Spyro 2, but he became great here. Yeah, it's like, it's basically like uh, Spyro 3 um, kind of just went, went with, um, Sparrow, uh, Sparrow, Sparrow 3 went with Sparrow 2's idea of like just having an actual cast and it just went further with that and just made the characters that came back even more likeable and it introduced Except like... money bags? Yeah, money bags it's just like, uh, let's make him even more of a jerk, but... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, well they know, they, it, it makes sense, I guess, but... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I just think, like in general, like the characters are just they just they're just fun. Like they're, en they're enjoyable to uh, uh, have the cutscenes with and like all that stuff. But besides yeah. that, hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh they want no. time too. <laughs> what you do? What do your dogs think about Spyro Frey? <laughs> Their favorite Insomniac game is actually Disruptor. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I think we've uh, covered more or less all we needed to. Uh, I mean, again, I, I wish this, I wish the um, original version of the game wasn't rushed so much, and, like, and um, actually had that one cutscene before the third boss, and uh, and even this version I'm playing. Um, has like a lot of the music not uh it, a lot of the music just isn't there uh, for some reason which is disappointing uh but uh, yeah oh yeah we still need to go through the through the um the atlas yeah you gotta go through her i like that the uh it's gem toe is like above the uh the amount oh i saw the same with the eggs Right. The epilogue. No music, which is a bit jarring, but yeah, here you go. Nancy wins gold at last. The dreaded curse of the tail snake comes true. <laughs> the seals oh, on the board of squid boarding. This is actually funny, because uh, uh, there's actually a cheat code, I think, that actually made a uh, makes the skateboard turn into squids, so it's kind of a reference to that. I'm getting sunshine flashbacks. Yeah. The game of Wacker Bentley is born. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Rhinoc. Prima Donna uh, entertains Klaus Spires. If they're made out of gems, how does this, this one survive? I guess... Hmm. That, and that nipple cool. armor looks horrifying. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> I like this. The Bailey gang finds an easy target. <laughs> Just that is broke. Man. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's lightning and thundering outside. Uh, that's not fun. <laughs> well, like, like, we uh, took uh, our, our gems back, and then, and then now he has to deal with these guys. Hmm. Zorian... Amy compete for Sparks' affections. I I've, I thought Amy was supposed to be in a relationship. Was going or like getting married or whatever it was. Like what the heck? I don't want to know. All right then. <laughs> Deputy Holiday Holiday catches the notorious Nya Nya gang. Nya. Oh, that's that, that's pretty good. Oh, and here's the uh, what's up that was supposed to happen. Uh, Nasty Nork and Rip to hold a summit to discuss the Spyro problem. Yep, that's what uh, Enter the Dragonfly was supposed to be. Bah! And that's so Hunter wasn't crazy? Yeah. 
That, and, uh, yeah, if you played Spyro 4, you know what that's referencing. Hunter, dis <laughs> <laughs> Hunter discovers babysitting is hotter than it looks. That is actually adorable. No, it's not going to be adorable and reignited with those dragon designs. Yeah, what is up with those designs? They're creepy looking. Everyone looked a little awkward yeah. in, in their infancy. Yeah, thank you for playing. We'll miss you. That That is a nice image to end the... End the trilogy on, I like that. Fairly well, Insomniac. You did your job. Yes. We'll see you. Yep, same Insomniac never made any games after this. <laughs> yeah, they just left. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, well, uh, I, I, I'm interested in playing the Ratchet and Clan games. Not, uh, not necessarily for LPs, I don't know if that will ever happen, but just playing them in general, because I've never actually played a Ratchet and Clank game, but, I don't know, uh, I, 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 I think we've basically covered all we need to say about Sparrow 3, um, a great game, uh, I really enjoy it, minus, like, a few sections here and there, but I think it's, this, this game is basically, um, um, the... Uh, I I don't want to like call like spark fires to the flames or anything like that, but this is basically yeah. <laughs> this is basically Spyro Spyro Two, um, but better in, in my opinion. Like it it brings in all the all the elements from Spyro Two and so and stuff in Spyro One and just kind of makes makes uh this they they one and two basically come to make a baby and they made Spyro Three and. Uh, I think it's just everything that the other other two games did, and just expanded upon, and... How come Zoe isn't in this picture? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Like, just and playable characters then Bianca? Th 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 this image is uh, very racist. <laughs> I don't mm. know. <laughs> Maybe she's the one holding the camera? That... Yeah, okay, that that wouldn't make more sense then. But hmm. it's a nice this is a nice refinement of the trilogy overall, like Yeah. I think I, I think I said this or either in this LP or Spyro Two is like as much as uh, much as we tend to rightfully gripe about yearly sequels, there were some benefits to it back in the day. Yeah, I think it's more it, it was more fine back then because they could get away with it because uh, the console, console technology wasn't so crazy at the time, whereas nowadays it's like, it takes so long to make a game now, which is it, and it's just ridiculous. Even Tomb Raider on the PS1 kind of struggled every once in a while. It was yeah. Like, I mean, you can have your sequels, just don't, just don't rush. Don't yeah. go crazy. Yeah, you, uh, make yearly sequels if you can manage it and make a, a good game. But if it, if, if it ends up being like a Enter the Dragon fight, you need like at least another year. Uh, you just don't don't bother trying because you you you, you uh, bad things will happen, and uh, it will. Yeah, you might tank a franchise. Pretty pretty much, yeah. We could have had a, we could have had something great with that. Yeah. Oh gosh, now I'm depressed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I try not to think about that too much because it, it it just goes into a bad spiral. Um. All right. Um. Uh, but now I'll do for Smash. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I I I enjoy I I I've enjoyed the uh, I enjoyed the Spyro trilogy quite a lot. Uh, like minus like, like it has its issues here and there, but I think, um, I think in general like the Spyro trilogy is a good starting point if you want to get into, uh, collector form platformers because it's nothing, too demanding. Um, I would recommend. Um, if you are interested in trying the Spyro games, like in playing like Reignited, um, I would recommend trying Spyro Two first because I think that's the most. Uh, beginner friendly um, and then after that it really depends on what you want what to uh, what you want to get like if you want um, basically a 
Evolution or Spyro 2. Um, place I would play Spyro 3 next, but if you want to... As you uh, want just more of just the platforming and uh, basically nothing but that in the collect in the collector fund aspect, I would play Spyro One after that. But yeah, I don't know. I th that's basically all I, all I have to say. I I I I enjoy the Spyro trilogy trilogy overall. I'm more I, I'm more of a Crash fan personally. But I do, <laughs> I do, I do like Sparrow, and uh, I hope the Reignite, Reignite trilogy does well. And yeah, that's basically all I had to say. All right, that's it, folks. Um, we thank you for your time, and Harry will be back with his next Let's Play, um, Punch Out featuring Bentley. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's playing it blind. So good night, folks. Oh, dude! I the only way they can make that uh, Bentley boxing work would be to make it punch out. Like I, I would be okay if they just completely redesign how it works and just made it punch out. Like it would actually make it worth playing at that point. But punch out, but you play as last. No, Bentley boxing, but you play as last Joe. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, but. Um, yeah, that's you know, done with the Spyro Trilogy. We're not going to do Enter the Dragonfly for at least a year, so don't expect that for a while. Ugh. Don't expect that for a while. Um, but... Hmm, you, uh, you, deci uh, you decided uh, what we're going to do next, so what, uh, what are we doing after this? Uh, I think we're doing Jungle Beat. Alright. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> finally we're getting... Getting back to Doggy Kong. Yeah. Just in time for K. Rool's debut in Smash Bros. We're going to play a game that doesn't feature him or Diddy Kong or any rare characters. I mean, we basically played all the games that K. Rool is in besides 64, and I refuse to play that. In, you will in, play it. in terms of like the main games. I, like, you will I, play it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would run out of commentary so fast, it's not even funny. Uh, get a different just get a di no every time you switch Kongs you get a different guest commentator. That would be such a mess because I'd have to switch like constantly. Uh, 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 honestly, if you, you want to see me play DK sixty four, just just watch my uh, live stream archives of the game because it's probably going to be more interesting uh, commentary than anything I'd be able to do for an LP to be honest. Uh, but. Yeah, next time we're going to be going through Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Going to try and get Jason in because uh, he both of these guys. Edition. Yeah, get the get the uh, trio back because uh, we were all, we were all here for DKC two and three, so it just feels right. Uh, but yeah, I, it's going to be blind because I've never played the game before. But yeah, next time. Maybe if we're lucky, Dixie will be in Smash by then. Yeah, he's hoping. Uh, but yeah, next time. Uh, uh, next to uh, um, collab LP is going to be D uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, so look forward to that. And I think that's basically all, all we need to say, so I guess we'll just sign out here. So, yeah, I've been Super Mario Sonic Lover. I am tired. Until <laughs> uh, uh, next year, the Dragon Friends. Good night. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Peace.